What is up Twitter thugs, social media reprobates and gamers in general? I'm Fox and you're watching PlayStation News Now, your source of news, rumour, video game discussion and our weekly The Gamer Couch podcast. Of course you can keep up to date by following the channel via Twitter, Fox at PS News Now, as seen in the bottom right of your screen. In today's news... If you're looking for some nostalgia from your games in what is quite possibly the most defining moment in PlayStation 3's first-person shooters, then look no further as game director David Pellis went on record in regards to Call of Duty Modern Warfare. Initially only available as a pre-order bonus with Call of Duty Infinite Warfare, you may be pleased to know Modern Warfare will likely be made available to purchase separately. Here's a quote. What we announced before today was that we were going to offer 10 maps on launch and that's still true. The announcement today is that 6 remaining maps we are actually going to be delivering to anyone who purchases Modern Warfare Remastered, anyone who owns it or a version of Infinite Warfare that comes with it, they're actually going to get all 16 maps for no additional cost. End of quote. Now just don't expect to be able to purchase Modern Warfare day and date with Call of Duty Infinite Warfare. More than likely, Modern Warfare will be made available a short time after the Infinite Warfare release window and don't expect it to be cheap either. As it stands, the full package available to pre-order now includes Infinite Warfare, Modern Warfare and six classic maps with the remaining maps coming weeks later, all for the princely sum of £69.99. A simple breakdown puts Infinite Warfare at £49.99 and Modern Warfare at £19.99. However, we expect a separate purchase of Modern Warfare to come in closer to around £29.99 or possibly even £39.99, so don't expect any favours from EA for those who buy separately. EA will probably want customers paying the premium for the bonus pre-order to feel they got exclusive access to the remaster. But if you have no interest in Infinite Warfare and really want to dive straight into easily the best in the Modern Warfare series with the remaster, you'll be able to do so without having to purchase both, which is kinda good news depending on your perspective. And in other news, at least according to a story featured on GamingBolt.com. So iterative consoles like PlayStation 4 Pro and Xbox Scorpio are not the future and current gen consoles are not weak. Now the PlayStation 4 Pro and Xbox Scorpio will kick off a new initiative in the console generation concept, a new generation that will end all console generations. At this point both Sony and Microsoft seem to be committed to the iterative console cycle. However, Andrea Farid Marsili, who is the programmer and CEO at Marslet Games, the team behind the upcoming Unknown Fate believes that iterative console cycle is not the future. Here's a quote. I don't think that this is going to be the future. In my opinion, PlayStation 5 and the next Xbox will have some modularity like interchangeable CPU and GPU. This is what he said to Gaming Bolt in an exclusive interview when he was asked whether Sony and Microsoft took the decision because the current console gen is pretty weak. He went on to say, I don't think that current gen consoles are weak. The real problem is that people always want more and they want it now. They can't and don't want to wait. This is why we see 10 gigabyte patches on day one. End of quote. Now these comments from Andrea certainly seem interesting, especially the statements about PlayStation 5 and the next Xbox. If PlayStation 5 and the next Xbox have interchangeable CPUs and GPUs or different tiers of configuration, it will bring the consoles more in line with PC gaming. However, his comments on whether consumers wanting more and wanting them quickly is how any consumer orientated industry works. Consumer feedback and wishes results in better products and further progress in technologies. Regardless, it will be interesting to see what Microsoft and Sony will do once the Pro and Scorpio launches. Ah, that's certainly some food for thought there, but as with everything and anything in this industry, we'll just have to wait and see how effective this new iterative approach will be and how it changes how we'll look at the console launches. And moving on. Highly anticipated PlayStation exclusive JRPG Persona 5 
is off to a great start in Japan, selling through 70% of its original shipment on day one in the region. Now, According to a Japanese blog which tracks game software sales data, Persona 5 sold through rate the percentage of sales from its original shipment during its first day on sale in Japan was 70%. In other words, 70% of physical copies of Persona 5 shipped to retailers in the Japanese market were sold on September 15th. This number indicates that Atlas sales expectations for the game are also in line with the actual sales numbers for the game's first week on store shelves. Previously, it was speculated that Sega could be expecting approximately 500,000 copies of the game sold this month. Actual sales for Persona 5's first week will be released via Media Crate next week. Persona 5 was released for PlayStation 3 and PS4 in Japan on September 15 and will land on European and North American shores February 14, 2017. And our next piece courtesy of WCCTech.com sourced from a Digital Spy interview. PlayStation President Andrew House has weighed in on the whole upgradable console initiative. Sony and Microsoft are upgrading their 8th generation video game consoles with better hardware and more features. Both PS4 Pro and Project Scorpio are the first of their kind. They come as an upgrade to the existing systems within the current generation rather than the start of a new generation. So what's next? Well. Could we see consoles that allow users to make PC-like hardware component upgrades? Maybe, but according to Sony, it is a very, very tough sell to imagine a thing like this. President and global CEO of Sony Interactive Entertainment, Andrew Howe sat with Digital Spy to talk in detail about the upcoming PlayStation 4 Pro console and the company's outset in the virtual reality space with PlayStation VR headset. During the discussion, House was asked if he could ever envisage a PlayStation console that would be upgradable just like PC in terms of hardware, here's a quick quote. It's very tough for me to envisage that at this point, he replied. Earlier this month, House stated that one of the reasons why Sony decided to supercharge its 8th generation home console was that he had seen some data that suggested there is a dip mid-console lifecycle with the players who want the very best graphical experience will start to migrate to PC, and Sony obviously want to prevent that from happening. In this new interview, House clarified his comments saying that PlayStation 4 Pro is not specifically made only for those who tend to move to the PC mid-cycle. Now we are full of quotes today, so here's another one. Now the question you pose is, are you the sort of player that absolutely wants the very best in terms of graphical experiences on the games that you play? If the answer to that is yes, then I think PS4 Pro is a worthy consideration. By extension, what I was suggesting is that players answering yes to that question inherently do tend to gravitate towards the PC, and perhaps do so at a certain point within the console cycle." End of quote. House's comments on an upgradable console align with that of Xbox boss Phil Spencer, who clarified earlier this year that Project Scorpio is not a console that would enable players to manually upgrade its individual components. Here's a quote. Am I going to break open my console and start upgrading individual pieces of my console? That's not our plan, he said. He went on to say, there is something special about what happens with a console. You buy an appliance-like device, you plug it into your TV, it works when you plug it in. It's not like I'm going to ship a screwdriver set with every console that comes out." End of quote. Interesting there, very interesting. And I will provide links to uh, both news pieces, the iterative consoles like PS4 Pro and Xbox Scorpio not being the future, and obviously the upgradable PlayStation console non-factor available in this video's description. And that brings us to the end of another video. If you enjoyed the content, go ahead and hit the like button. Thanks to all those who kindly share our videos, helping us to reach more PlayStation fans and gamers in general. And of course, subscribe for more news, rumor, and always video game discussion. Until next time, play games, not corporations. Thanks for watching everybody.